Captain Slug contacted me and asked if I wanted a free Caliburn to do a review on. Uh, I, I turned him down. I didn't... I've seen one in person and I didn't... There's a couple flaws with it that I personally don't like. But uh, rather than just getting my opinion, I figured uh, I'd ask some people, some actual customers of individuals in the Melbourne Nerf community who have actually bought some. And we have here Michael, uh, who's done, we've done a Caliburn loadout before with, and we also got Pete from Wasteland Wars up in Bendigo. Yay! These two guys bought Caliburns. Dun dun. How honest do you want us to be? <laughs> I'll just, uh, I'll be honest. Pros and cons. So, how long have you had your blasters? And how has it been, I guess? So, I've had my color burn since about June, July. This is probably the second Nerf War that I've brought it to. And uh, the pros are it's it's easy to work, easy to pump. That's a K26 in there. Little minimal effort to pump it. Performance is pretty good, even without a scar barrel. But once you put a scar barrel on there and you're running Stefan's, it is amazing. It is accurate pretty much from one side of the field to the other, or two thirds of the way through the field. I really like the Caliburn. It does have its issues. As, as you said, it's really easy to prime. It's really nice loading darts through the breach. Unless, of course, uh, you're using... A katana man. Katana man. Uh. Blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> but the Caliburn side of it, uh, brilliant. Loads darts like a dream, whereas plenty of br brass breaches I've used, it just they just chew darts up. They just love to eat them for breakfast. But this, just... In you go. The deafening sound that it makes when it fires is brilliant. Uh, right, next to your, <laughs> right next to your ear, like, Ching. can I get that any further in my ear canal? Maybe. Uh, last weekend was a bit uh, humorous because you were using full lengths, and then I'm like, <laughs> hey, here, try this, and I gave you one of our Stefan, uh, worker Stefan mags, and we just had some cut down FVJs and a scar barrel on it, it's like, ooh. <laughs> this thing works like a dream. Yeah, I've heard that a lot of uh, scar barrels, it, the Caliburn likes to chew the, the wires out of it, just just push him out, but decided to make myself a little housing for the scar barrel I got from uh, Liam Davis, uh, which is actually quite a good scar barrel. I like it a lot. Um, the only thing that survives from my long shot, other than the spring, just works like a dream, as you were saying, with the sh short darts. Uh, this is a K25 in this one. Uh, I didn't know the difference between the springs, so one was slightly wider and one was shorter. I just sort of guessed at which one was better. They fire pretty damn true when it comes to short darts with the scar barrel through the Caliburn. So, flaws. Dun dun dun. Dun dun. The whole build's really flexible, and it's put together with all of these torsion screws that, if they're not all done to the right extent, your blast is at an angle to itself. Like, in the middle, it's just... Case in point, that is bowed. Yeah. That is not straight. And it won't which, prime properly, it won't fire properly. Which way is it bowing? Like, it is uh, just... It's yeah. not flat on top. And, and that, that hassles the entire mechanism. All of the seals are completely hassled by that. I don't know what to tell you, this linear thing for firing little darts needs to be quite straight and that's hard to do. 200 screws <laughs> to tighten. It's because, is it just because like there's six bolts? Or like then yeah. there's multiple but, nuts and, and this they all wacky, have to be tightened? And wacky thing in here, which uh, that printed thing, the dart guide is flexible, so it actually will pull back uh, if you've got the the nuts around the wrong way or whatever, which then it will push into the mag and it will cause the darts to load wrong and it will like hit the, the front of the barrel or the, the rear of the barrel. These barrel affixing tightening screws here are tapped straight into the 3D printed PLA which you can, you can very easily turn those threaded holes into very flush holes with no thread, <laughs> which I have done and now my barrel does really cool tricks. Ooh. <laughs> I have had a lot of people have uh, catching, catching issues as well, uh, but I've never had that issue. So, you, have you had any breaks? Yeah, or? last one I brought this to was the first time I took it out, and it works fine for the most part. However, the screw that holds the, the plunger head to to that spring guide came loose, and of course that caused issues with my cocking, and it wasn't catching. Uh, as a result, I've got a chip in. The plunger head and every time you cock it the plunger head and the guide guide rod turn rotate ever so slightly so say on a full rotation probably be a full mag of or a mag and a half of stefan's which means at one point i will get slam fires i will get the bolt head not catching by which point i've just got to keep cocking it priming it priming it till that rotation passes that chip point that's strange that is, that is what is causing 
a lot of misfires. The reason for that being, I guess, last time when the screws came out, I took it apart and I had to take everything, just take it all apart and try and fix it. That's the other con about this thing is, if you don't set it up right the first time, you'll be taking it apart after every game and it, you put it together again and you realise that it's bowed or you've got a screw loose or something. So sometime between now and the next war, I'll have to take this all apart, all the screws that I've locked tied it. I'm going to have to take them all apart, clean it, find it, maybe print another plunger head and then put it all back together and hopefully I've got everything on there tight. The one glaring thing when I first saw these is uh, the Picatinny um, is on a pivot, like it's on a single bolt. I don't know, that just boggles my mind. It defeats the purpose of having a Picatinny rail it's, entirely. Yeah, so, solid anchoring point which is in no way solid. That's really tight but it's still just wobbly wobbly wobbly. And to anyone who's going to be like, you don't need an optic, well, uh, <laughs> you haven't used a scar barrel, mate, <laughs> so... You haven't used the caliber. Most <laughs> careful blast in that, man. Things that you would want change in a, an, an official, proper, hard version 2 of the Caliburn. Injection moulding on friction parts. A lot of the priming and moving bits that slide on each other that are 3D printed. Just sounds like running your fingernail across a, <laughs> one of those holographic sheets of material. Mmm, mm. feels mm. good on my ears. The less parts there are to this, the less fails that there can be. Um, like I said, you've got to strip everything out just to change the spring. My main concern was the 3D print, which is 100% infill, it's strong, but that will, eventually, that will fail at one point. Uh, I guess if he could make it one solid piece, or injection mold would be better, or milled if he could, mm. that'd be stronger, I would, I would buy another one in a heartbeat. But it, at the point, at this point, the reason I bought it was because I'm too lazy to, to make one myself, and this has been, once I get it fixed and working again, it'll be, it'll be a top, top performer. Definitely, you know, if it could be printed in one piece, you could print a lot of that in, as one piece, and you wouldn't really need to add a, all the little tiny bits together. That if all you had a big enough rotate. printer, maybe. So going back to pros and cons, I guess the pros are, you don't have to buy it. Like, you can just, if you can source the parts yourself, you can get the plans to print it yourself. Hmm. Performance is good, the cocking the priming is good, customer service with Captain Slug is good. He answered all my emails pretty fast, and he, he was um, pretty accommodating to my questions. So there's a good customer service there. Cons would be, you know, the assembly side of things. Like half the time I've got these screws loose because if I over tighten it, you know, I'm, I'm scared I'm going to break the 3D print. Strip it out. Yeah, or strip out the screws or the threads. I've got a bit of Velcro in there because if you tighten it too much, these two bars will actually bow out. Oh, is that a zip tie too? Yeah, that's a zip tie to hold the bar I've together. I've seen something about that break on some of them, and so your those two are different on yours. Yeah, mine will be yeah. the older one, I think. His is new, his yeah, new mine's one. only uh, from September or something like that. So, uh, yeah, so I think that is an updated piece. Slightly rev later, like this has these two lugs as well, which mine only has one and uh, uh, a hole for some reason. I have no idea what the hole's for. I do like that he's constantly uh, trying to work out a better way to do the Caliburn. Like, I don't, I don't know how quickly and efficiently he's doing that. I don't know if he's working on it full time or if he's doing other things with his life other than building a Nerf Blaster. But yeah, he seems to be working on it and that's good. Seven million thumbs up for that because uh, there's plenty of blaster makers out there who, uh, who would make a not very good blaster and then call it finished and say, ah, great. Thank you very much, Pete, Michael, showing off talking about your blasters and sharing your dangerous opinions on the internet. How dare you? <laughs> I'm going to be assassinated tomorrow. It's all good. That's what I will think. I don't know if my identity is out there. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to go home, have water. <laughs> See ya. Bye.